Hello, my friends, esteemed colleagues, family. Today we are going to explain a little bit what does it mean to have a fibrous organ. There is um, a very common occurrence that especially elderly, um, chronically ill people, end up with having some kind of a fibric tissue. Now, most common, of course, is um, pulmonal fibrosis, but then also renal, we don't call it fibrosis, we call it cirrhosis, it's the same thing, or um, liver cirrhosis. Again, fibrosis, cirrhosis, scar tissue, it's basically the same thing. Now, why do I say it's a basically the same thing? Because the whole body basically is held together by connective tissue. Um, we call it collagen. And then within this collagen, you have uh, specialized cells that form organs for special functions. Uh, being it the uh, heart, being it the uh, liver, being it the uh, spleen, being it uh, whatever organ. So basically, everything, everything is held in place through collagen mesh. Now, they don't teach us anything in medical school about these things other than, well, we really don't know why it occurs. So we look what kind of people suffer from this. So it's usually chronically ill, long-term ill people. And this is why basically it's a problem of elderly. And then we look at statistics. What did, it, did those people with organs that become fibrous, what did they do during their life? So if they were exposed to some kind of a dust, uh, being a silica, met, um, heavy metal, or I don't know, Teflon, or, or whatever, uh, coal dust, then bingo, okay, so this dust somehow is causing problem. We don't know exactly, but we say, oh, what is this toxin? But also, uh, when it comes to lungs, for example, then we notice that smokers, long-term smokers, may, may not, but mostly will develop certain stage of pulmonary fibrosis. We know those who abuse alcohol, they will go into fibrosis, cirrhosis of liver. Now, what would cause a kidney cirrhosis? Well, majority of things, majority of people that develop this fibrotic tissue cirrhotic tissue, scar tissue within their organs or body. It could be just scar tissue on collagen tissue. I mean, we see it in um, eyes. So cataract is cirrhotic, eye cirrhotic or fibrotic lens, eye lens. So 
again, big question. Ah, oh, well, it cannot be dealt with. You know, once when it develops, this is it. We cannot uh, uh, do nothing about it. It can never regenerate, of course. Uh, why it cannot regenerate? Because people should not be eating salt. And uh, more chronically ill you are, the less salt you should be taking. Okay, this is what they are teaching us in medical school. So when we come to the point that, okay, we cannot pin this fibrotic tissue on genetics because no one in family had it. And we cannot pin it to any of the other sources. So we have gave, given it name, okay? We call it idiopathic fibrosis. And I think that this is the best possible description of any disease that we have invented because doctors feel like idiots not being able to solve this problem. What to do, how to deal with it? Okay, symptomatic, because there are other problems. People cannot, with, with fibrotic uh, lungs, the capacity of it to expand is dramatically reduced. So it's a shallow breathing. People are low of oxygen. So let's take rapidly the mystery out of this. Unfortunately, all doctors are idiots because they don't think. What is happening with a protein when you dehydrate it? Well, the best example is with the egg white. If you heat up egg white over 55 degrees Celsius, the protein will coagulate. What happens? It breaks and releases water. And what happened with egg white? Egg white, normally, when it's in a raw state, it's a natural state, it is transparent, gelatinous stuff. It's actually collagen. It has a protein fiber immersed in water, well hydrated. Same as islands. So when you dehydrate collagen, the white fibers of protein start showing up. And this is your cataract. And actually, this is the scar tissue that forms in the body on, on organs affected. This is your fibrotic lung, it's a basically dehydrated to shit. And since the big wisdom that doctors cannot get over that salt does not increase blood pressure at all, well, they cannot pass this griddle because we have been pumped with this idea all our lives. So what happens? We ignore the lack of minerals. We ignore the lack of plasma. What is common for all these people that have fibrotic organs? They have very thick blood. They are all on blood thinners. Blood thinner, anticoagulant. So, can people with fibrotic tissue be helped? Of course they can. But not with any signs that we are told in medical school. Because it's wrong science, purposely misleading science. And Doctors' diplomas depend on this science. 
So if this science is fake, then diploma is worthless. And actually, it is so. With the exception of dealing with emergency situation, symptomatically tweaking the body, doctors have absolutely no clue about any disease because they still didn't figure it out that diseases do not exist. These are all frequent names based on symptoms or based on someone who put two symptoms together and invented some new disease. Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, Hop Hodgkin's syndrome. It's stupid. It's all about toxicity. Toxic blood, toxic tissue caused by dehydration. Lack of minerals because we refuse to eat salt. And the salt we are given is purposely made toxic to prove the medical point. And the good salt, the original salt, the not refined and not iodide, natural sea salt, you cannot find in a regular store. I have mentioned several times here in Peru, it's illegal to sell such a salt. You just don't get sanitary permission for it. So if they find you that you are selling this stuff, you go to jail. They are poisoning people. It's not refined. Well, there we go. So, anyone suffering from any of these fibrotic problems, cirrhotic problems, now knows that, that they can go and start healing. Of course, in the worse situation you are, the more cirrhotic is the liver, the more fibrotic is the lung, the more difficult it is going to be to recuperate from this. Once, when you have a, a cataract, it's very difficult to clear it up because this is now damaged tissue that is very difficult to hydrate. But we should never allow any body to go in that state. And it can be, problem can be relieved. I have clients, 72 year old clients, clients, client, uh, that uh, is now four years <coughs> on a protocol. She had um, always dry cough, always dry cough, dry cough, and other problems. Lack of energy, headaches, back pain, joint pain, or everything else that follows the dehydrated cells. And she starts hydrating, doing the protocol, change diet and hydrating. And after four years now, she says that she doesn't cough anymore. And she breathes much easier. So steadily, little by little, she's reversing the fi fibrogenous state, fibrotic state. So it is possible. We doctors, we should be ashamed of ourselves that we didn't have the kugel to figure things out. At least the basic ones, that salt is not toxic, that salt doesn't increase blood pressure. I mean, everybody goes and swims in the seawater and they feel great. You are absorbing tons of salt when you are in the water. You are urinating later on. And if you taste your urine, which nobody does, you will see it's extremely salty because you are filtering the salt out. The surplus 
you are eliminating. And you feel good because you are cleansing and hydrating at that time, hydrating your blood. And this is why we feel good when we are on a seashore soaking ourselves in the seawater. And nobody is having heart palpitations or increased blood pressure. Actually, we are relaxed. Blood pressure goes down. So is it so difficult to put two and two together? Well, I guess so, because the brainwashing that we go through, through our indoctrination schooling system is really strong. And it's not only the schooling system. It is then the media. It's part of this. And has a big part in this. Because you have the same thing in the movies. They show you, ah, you are stranded in the middle of the sea. Well, don't drink water. You cannot drink the seawater. You're going to die. And people are dying, dehydrated with blisters, bubbles, and water is all around them. And yes, you can drink seawater and you'll be fine. Only your urine will be very, very salty and your skin will turn white because you will be exposing the salt also through your skin. I tried it. Try it yourself. Yeah, you're going to have shits because it's way too much minerals and you are going to be eliminating them. So you are going to be cleansing like crazy through colon, through skin, through kidneys. But you will be living. So instead of drinking a lot of it, you can basically go and lay in the water. in seawater, and you will absorb and eliminate surplus. Welcome to, welcome to disclosure. So, re-educate yourself. I'm just pointing to you simple, simple facts. You don't have to trust me. But at least it's a, another information. And if you're not lazy, try it for yourself. When you're healthy, check your blood pressure. Blood pressure is OK. Go and drink seawater. Check your blood pressure then. You'll see it'll be the same. Absolutely zero difference. Yeah, you'll be urinating. You'll get your shits. But blood pressure? Same, absolutely zero, zero, zero influence on blood pressure. And you will be healing by drinking seawater. And uh, you can dilute it 3 to 1, 4 to 1, 5 to 1 if you want. And just drink it. So, if you're suffering from cataracts, now you know. It's not a freaking... UV light, don't use shades, because shades are eliminating certain light frequencies, wavelengths. You need those. Sun is healing stuff. Don't put sunblocks, don't use shades. Protect yourself and gradually expose yourself to the sunlight until you have enough pigment so you don't get burned. That's all. Well, thank you for listening. Another disclosure. Okay, hope you are well. And come back and we'll go and discover more things. Love you all.